Hello there again, it's Matthew here from Matthew North Music. When I start my videos, I'm normally sat here on my sofa in the living room, and you may notice behind me this thing. And I thought today I'd do a video about it. It's a boombox from the mid-1980s, and it's made by Amstrad, who of course are probably better known these days for uh, Alan Sugar being the presenter of The Apprentice. But uh, before they got into making things like computers and satellite receivers, they did make hi-fi and consumer electronics. And this one dates back from about 1983. And it's called the Amstrad 8090 Great Player. And I have to say, I think it's great. Well, what makes this boombox so special for me? Well, that's a very simple answer. This was the first portable audio piece of kit that I ever owned. It was 1983 and it was in late August, and my parents bought me this for my then 11th birthday present. And it was the most exciting thing, because you'd just seen these things on TV. I had a few friends that had boom boxes, and they were just an exciting new piece of technology. And this was the one that I had. Well, not this very one, um, which I'll talk about later, but it was this particular model and it has so much nostalgia for me because it was in my bedroom. It was in that period of time when for me, pop music was at its peak in 1983, 1984. I recorded and listened to the chart show every Sunday on this. I even copied computer games on this. Everything about those formative years of my life was summed up inside this box. On first glance then, it doesn't look anything too out of the ordinary for a portable radio cassette player of the time. It has two cassette decks for tape to tape copying, it has a three band radio, and it has external inputs for microphone on the front. Nothing too exciting, but let's have a little closer look. The first thing that made this boombox really stand out was the top cassette deck, and that's because you could do this. The top deck functioned as a personal cassette player like any other Walkman of the day. You had the standard controls on the top, you had pause eject button, you had rewind and fast forward, play and you had separate left and right volume controls. In the back it took four AA batteries and then the unit would just simply slot back into the main housing of the machine, giving you tape to tape. Now if we look at the top level of controls, it gives the impression of it being like a micro hi-fi system, which in many ways, when it's plugged in, it becomes. We start on the bottom row, and you have all the standard controls you would expect. Bass, treble, balance, volume. You've then got the loudness control, which in effect is like a bass booster. You've got this high filter, which is basically like a way of getting rid of hiss. You've got a mono button which is mostly used when you're using the FM radio because if you've got a poor reception signal in stereo, by, prep, by monoing it, you get rid of all the hiss, but you do get it only in mono. On the top row here, we've got our tuner, of which we've got long wave, medium wave, and FM. We've got this AFC beat cut thing, which is a, an, an interference suppressor thing of some description. But then we've got this little section here, and we've actually got a clock and with the clock, what you can do, like any other clock, is you can set the time. But also, you've got this little button here that says timer manual. And with that, you can put a cassette into the recording deck, put it into record, set the timer, press that button, and then the deck will fire off when the timer's been set. And that means you can record any radio program, any time, day or night, as long as it lasts less than the length of the tape that you put in. So if you were to get a, a C120, then you could record an hour's worth of radio on the timer. And that used to be really useful if I wanted to record something that was on the radio when either I wasn't at home or I was at school or something. First thing you'll notice is these VUs flashing. Now, if I take the button out, it just becomes like a can power help you discover support, training, and advice. It just becomes like a power meter. 
Whereas if you press it in, it's just a general sort of level control. Going from right to left, we set on radio, we've got the tape option and we've got a phono option, which I'll show you in a minute, but on the back there are phono inputs to plug an external record deck into this unit, which is what I used to have in my bedroom at home. You then got a noise reduction for the cassette deck. It's sort of like Dolby, but it isn't. Um, it's just like a kind of hiss reduction. And then you've got chrome, metal, or normal tape option on the cassette deck. You've got two inputs there for microphones, and you've got a volume control. This is our bottom cassette deck. It has a soft touch eject, which is uh, rather nice. And there's another nice little feature this deck has got, which I'm just going to show you. If I pop a cassette in and press play, if there's a problem with the alignment of the head, you've got this little hole in the front and you can just pop a little tweaker in there and you can adjust the alignment of the head. Now that is a function I have never seen on any cassette deck ever. And it's a really neat little feature. Well, the next really cool thing about this radio cassette player is this. You can actually remove the loudspeakers. And this kind of turns it more into the micro hi-fi system than it does portable. And looking at the back of the system, we've got an external 12 volt input. So this could be run on something like a car battery. So you could take this away or use the cigarette lighter adapter of a car. You've got the mains or internal battery switch there. And if we open this little door up, you need a hefty amount of batteries to keep this unit in going. Although you've also got a, a one and a half volt cell there, that's just basically for the clock. These are the speaker out left and right so sockets, and you had little fly cables that went to the speakers for having them separated, or you could just plug a different set of speakers into it as long as you disconnected these first. You've got an external FM aerial socket there, there's our phono input. There's the standard telescopic aerials that then extend. Now, I guess the main question has to be, what's the sound quality like? Well, for me, it's better than it was when I first owned it. And that goes back to this head tweaking business here. Because whenever I played a tape on the top deck, now I can't show you a tape playing on this one because it's actually got a little fault which I need to get sorted out. So the top deck actually isn't working properly. It's fast forward and rewind is fine. But when I hit the play button, it doesn't quite latch in properly. So I, I need to look at that a bit closer. But the bottom deck, on my original one of these 8090s, it was always a little bit muffly. And it wasn't until I tweaked the head on this one, which was also muffly when I got it, that I got it to sound good. And it makes me think, possibly, when these were being manufactured in Japan... In the, in the early 80s, that they hadn't aligned the head of that deck properly. I suspect the mechanism for the Walkman top bit here may well have been made in a different factory, and they actually aligned that properly. But it was weird that both my original one of these and this one had that same issue. Plenty of bass. I've tend to play it with the bass dialed in a couple of notches there. I'm just playing something that's non-copyright off a Type 1 tape. Funnily enough, it's a All Living Fear cassette, because at least then I know I won't get a content strike on it. But I can tell you now, this sounds really, really good with any well-recorded cassette for playback. And the sound quality of the radio is also very good. Again, I can't really play much because of content matches. There's a little bit of the radio anyway, I hope it picks up. But yeah, this I think is a bit of a forgotten classic because it's not a Sharp, it's not a Sony, it's Amstrad. And Amstrad have always been thought of for making crap products 
and 90% of the stuff made by Amstrad is not very good. They got it right with their digital satellite receivers. They didn't get it right with their PC computers because they put bad hard drives in them. My first PC was an Amstrad and I loved it until the hard drive died about two years later. But this is to me a forgotten classic of portable consumer electronics. And if you ever want to get a good sounding 80s boombox made in Japan, this would be one to go for. Now, I bought this off eBay faulty. It needed a lot of work doing. I needed to replace the mains cable. I replaced all the belts for the cassette deck. I gave it a clean inside. But what was really nice to see inside is that it was actually very well constructed. It had discrete component boards in there. They were laced together. It, it had a bit of quality about its manufacture. Uh, the speakers still work. And yeah, I would say if you want to find a really good old boombox from the 80s, look up an Amstrad 8090 great player or an Amstrad 8090. Give it a clean, give it some TLC, and you, you've got a really good piece of vintage electronics. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you have, please like and subscribe, and keep an eye out for the next one.